I want to welcome you to Week in Review. Thank you so much for being with us. I trust that you'll find this episode very helpful because we're living in a time where obviously there is so much happening regarding COVID and masks and vaccines. And is the federal government demanding now that employees be vaxxed? And then Max Licato, he was vaxxed, but then he got COVID. And Cleveland Clinic said, if you've had COVID-19, then you probably don't need to be vaxxed. Others are saying you'll need a booster. You better put on your mask. Uh, I saw a montage with Dr. Fauci the other day, and I'm not kidding you. He was saying over a period of time, you, we won't need masks. And then he was saying, well, we better wear the mask. And then it was, we have to wear the mask. Well, now I think we don't need the mask. And well, if we're vaccinated, let's skip the mask. And then all of a sudden it was double mask. And People are swirling around, and I want to help you when we look back and also when we look ahead. Now, Proverbs 22.3 says something very clearly. It says, the prudent man sees danger and he'll hide himself, but the fool goes on and suffers for it. So we're going to be prudent, and I hope I'll offer you some information. Everything starts with prayer. James 1 says, if we lack wisdom, we're to ask of God. But we have to ask with a single mind. So we ask God for wisdom, how we're to proceed. And I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you what to do or not to do. But you want to be informed. You want to be an informed influencer and also in making medical decisions. Uh, Now, listen to this. You're probably seeing this in your city. This is our newspaper statewide. Whammo. Here it is. You know, COVID-19, it's not over. Well, what's happening is there's a lot of anxiety and fear. I traveled to Charlotte, North Carolina recently, and you're seeing people with masks. You can tell tension in the atmosphere. But I want you to have today what I would call an assurance policy. That's what I've given this out years back. It's not insurance, but it's assurance. And do you know in 2 Peter chapter 1, it tells us in verse 2, we'll put it on the screen, that God wants us to enjoy peace. And that peace is to multiply. Not to be living in stress and tension and fear and doubt and unbelief, but peace. And then it goes on to tell us that he has power. And it is his power that what? Enables us to enjoy life. And he gives us through his power all things that pertain to life and godliness. That's the physical and that's spiritual. And then in the next line, it goes on to say that he has made available to us great, exceedingly great and precious promises. Do you know what those promises are? Do you know what those provisions are for you and your family and your loved one so that you stay above the fray and you're not walking in any of this fear that's going on right now? Now, I encourage you, God wants you to be at peace. God wants you to be at rest, not perplexed. But the next lines there, when you read them in 2 Peter 1, it goes on in 5 and 6 to say that what we're called to do is to make every effort. So God gives us things, but then he also calls us to pivot, and then we're supposed to work. And we're to add to our virtue or our character, uh, what? Faith. And then faith, we're to add, what? Knowledge. And then knowledge helps us with self-control. If you know something and you know what God wants you to do, then you can be controlled. It's kind of like if you're trying to lose some weight. Well, you study nutrition and you know, you, uh, you know, read labels and all of that is important so that you can then with that knowledge exercise self-control. Now, I want to give you three power-packed promises that are embedded in prayers. I pray these on a daily pray- basis, daily. I don't know what your practice of prayer is, but I want you to be protected. I want you to be at peace. And here are three power-packed prayers. Number one is Psalm 91. I invite you and encourage you. I recite this every day, and I'm going to tell you, here it is. Listen to this. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, so you speak it, of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. He will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He'll cover me with his feathers and under his wings I'll find refuge. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I'll not be afraid. 
for the terror by day, nor the arrow that flies by night, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. I'll only look with my eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. And then God says, now because I've made the Lord my refuge, no evil shall befall me, no plague come near my dwelling place. Yes, he says that. And then he says this, now because you, I've made the Lord my refuge, he says, I will deliver you. Read the, the remaining parts of that psalm there. He says, because, you know, you'll be at my right hand. I'll protect you. I'll guard you. I mean, it just goes on and on. You say, Larry, these are power-packed promises. Yes, they are. And they're provisions for you and your family. But it, there are conditions. We dwell under the secret place of the Most High. And then we claim the beautiful promises of protection. That's one gift to you. Number two would be this. There is in the Bible very clearly a prayer. It is the only prayer, and it's in Numbers chapter 6, where God himself gave the exact wording of a prayer to Moses, and Moses passed it to Aaron, and it was to be passed on with no break in the cadence to all the other generations. And then there were blessings. Now, my wife and I, before we go to bed at night, we pray this over each other. We learn this little practice from what? Her parents, they were married almost 70 years. They had eight children. I mean, when we look at the legacy that they've left, they're in heaven right now, but they pass that on to us. So before we retire, I'll speak this over my wife and she'll speak it over me. Well, what is it? The Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he turn his countenance towards you. May he be gracious to you, give you favor, and give you peace. Whoo! That's power packed. You say, that's, that's poetic, but you know what? It's a blessing, and God personally, you say, well, I thought the Lord's prayer was given by God. Yes, that is a model prayer, but this is a prayer of blessing that I encourage you to lay hold of and appropriate for you, your family, and believe God. I pray it with my wife every night. There's one more blessing, and that is in 1 Chronicles. There was a fellow, his name was Jabez. You may recall Jabez, uh, there was a prayer of Jabez, and it was a, a blockbuster book. Bruce Wilkinson wrote the book, and over nine million sold, and why? Because it was a promise of protection and blessing and breakthrough. And right here in the Nashville area right now, there are people that for the past month, they've been just simply praying that prayer and believing God for breakthrough promise protection. And they've been doing it every single day. Now, I pray that in my prayer time in the morning. That's part of my devotional. It's my practice of prayer. And I encourage you, I pass it along to you for your blessing. At this time where all this stuff is going on about COVID and Max and all the rest of that. What did Jabez? Jabez's name means sorrow and pain. And it says that Jabez, as a young man, he was more honorable than his brothers. So there was something special about this guy. And I trust that speaks of you. Well, you know what? His mother bore him in pain, but he was not one to just simply give up, throw in the towel and say, well, what am I going to do? My life is over. No, he believed God for great things. And what did he pray? He said, oh God, I pray that you will bless me, that you will enlarge my borders or my territory. Grant me favor in this realm and enlarge. And then he said this, let your hand be upon me. That speaks of the favor of God and keep me from evil. Whew. You know what it says? The Lord granted his prayer. Now, these are three power-packed prayers that I'm encouraging you in this week in review to incorporate into your life at this time. And you know, I want to end with this little illustration. You know, there's a man that uh, returned from combat duty, and um, when he was on the, on the battlefield, literally uh, in the Middle East, wherever it was, I forget, you know, he was shot and he was dazed and he was knocked down. And when they took him into the tent or wherever it was, uh, the infirmary, they found the bullet had gone right towards his chest, his heart. But you know what? He revived. And when they revived him, they saw as they had opened his uh, armament, you know, protection and vest and everything, that he had a New Testament there and an Old Testament, the two together Bible. And it was right there in the pocket. And when the bullet came, it went right into the Bible. And when they opened the Bible up, the man was stunned because he believed in the protection of Psalm 91 
And that bullet was right there, stopped at the 91st Psalm. There, uh, you say, Larry, that is incredible. Well, it's true. And I'll tell you this, the devil knows the power of that Psalm. If you see the three temptations Jesus faced in the wilderness, you know what Jesus faced? Satan tried to take Psalm 91 and he distorted it. He wanted Jesus to do something, you know, presumptuous. But the, the, the devil left out a portion when he said, jump down, come on, jump down. You know, his angels will bear you up. But he left out a few, uh, you know, words that he'll guard you in all your ways. In other words, when you're in the will of God, which Jesus was. So I want to encourage you. These are three prayers. We look back, we see the, the avalanche, the bombardment, the tsunami of all this confusing and, oh, believe the signs and Fauci said and all the rest of that. But let's look ahead by looking into the Word of God, claiming the promises and believing Him, and then walking in victory and good health and protection at this time.